Broadcast Center, my good friend Matthew Wexler from the Broadway blog, giving us some Broadway news. Matthew, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Ava, happy February, the month of love. Oh, thank you so much. Happy February <laughs> to you, too. Thank you. So, we have so much to talk about today. It's spring is coming, so many new shows are happening. Um, you have sort of mapped out three to see this spring. Let's start with your first selection. Yeah, well, I thought as we chatted this uh, this week that it would be interesting to, to sort of look at shows through the lens of performers versus the, the production itself, although they're interesting in and of itself. But I think sometimes when we go to the theater, sometimes we're going to see a production and sometimes we're going to see uh, a personality or someone that we've just fallen in love with their work. So Very there's true. three performers this, uh, this season that are coming back to Broadway that I, uh, for the most part, I'm just infatuated with their work. The first one is <laughs> Jesse Mueller, which is probably of the three, a name least familiar to people outside of the, the Broadway New York theater scene. Right. Uh, but Jesse uh, is a Chicago girl and she comes from a theater family. Her father, Roger Mueller, has been an actor in Chicago for decades. Her mom, Jill, was an actor as well and then had kids and has since returned to acting. So Jesse actually has three siblings. She has a sister, Abby, and two brothers, and all of them are actors, and all of them are working, which amazing. is amazing to me. <laughs> they have really good luck, and they're talented. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Jesse is going to be starring in uh, the revival of Carousel, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, which first appeared on Broadway in 1945. I was doing a little bit of digging, and I was like, I wonder how many Tony Awards Carousel won when it first opened. Would you care to take a guess? Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to start. I'm gonna. I'll say three. Zero. <gasps> oh. <laughs> And the reason why is that the Tony Awards didn't even exist until 1947. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great question. at math, so. Yeah. Uh, so the Tony <laughs> Awards, although the show was still running in 47, uh, the Tony Awards were obviously acknowledging new shows that opened. But Jessie is fantastic. And I first saw her work, uh, at least in New York, in a revival of On a Clear Day You Can See Forever with... Um, Harry Connick Jr., mm -hmm. which was not a very good production, but she was just this burst of sunshine. I think she was actually nominated for a Tony Award. She just had these amazing vocals, and she has since gone on and done a number of things. She won a Tony Award for Beautiful, the Carol King yeah. musical. She did Waitress, which I know you saw this past yes. year with another performer, but she was incredible on in that. I'm and she just obsessed had... with the, the original Broadway soundtrack that, of course, she is on, and her voice is just so beautiful and so unique and sort of different sounding than a typical sort of Broadway voice. I mean, she can literally sing anything, but I feel like the choice to use her in this show is sort of cool. Like, it's this always uh, kind of, in my mind, was a very traditional musical theater piece, and she's sort of on the other side of things, so that combination yeah. sounds pretty interesting to me. Yeah, well, you know, she did a production a few years ago. Maybe it was when she was in Chicago, and she played, uh, oh, what is the other female role, the one that Audra McDonald won a Tony Award for? Carrie Pepperidge? I don't know. She played the other role. So, <laughs> okay, the other uh, so now she's playing the main. The main. <laughs> yeah, and so she's great, and I'm excited to see her. She's playing opposite Joshua Henry in, in that, and I think they're going to be great. So I can't wait to see her hit, hit the yeah. stage. So that's number one. Okay. Uh, number two is another Chicago actress, actually, Lori Metcalf, who is one of the original members of Steppenwolf. Yeah. Lori, I think TV viewers probably know her most from Roseanne. Yes, of course. Uh, and then she also did this amazing, oh, it's so funny. I don't know if you ever watched Getting On, which was a, I don't know, there were maybe three seasons of it. She played this really sort of narcissistic uh, geriatric doctor, like in a geriatric ward of a hospital. Right. She's so good. Uh, she's and awesome. she's, she's also so nominated for an Oscar this year for Lady Bird, and she's brilliant in that movie. She's so good. So she's coming to Broadway with two other actresses in a revival of Edward Albee's Three Tall Women, which won the Pulitzer Prize. It's a little difficult to describe this play. It's basically three women at three different ages and sort of the, their interactions and their individual courses mm. through their lives. But she's, I guess she's tall. I don't know. I don't know how tall the woman that cap is. <laughs> I do know she's a great actress, and she, she what great. I love about her is that she is kind of a, 
like a hot wire. I first saw her actually when I lived in Chicago. She was doing a play at Stephen Wolf called My Thing of Love, which eventually moved to Broadway for a short-lived run. It's kind of this modern contemporary drama. And she was swinging around this this oar, kind of like batting up the stage. So she's a, she's a live wire and you never quite know what you're gonna get from her. She's a very spontaneous, uh, kind of combustible actress. So I'm excited to see Definitely. her in this production. Yeah, I, I agree with you with her. Everything she does is exciting. I feel like she's so versatile. She really is so genuine in her roles. And, and you mentioned she's great at accents. She's great at these sort of character-y roles, but she really is so believable. You just forget uh, the separation between the actor and the character with her. I agree. There's this level of, and I'm sure it's rehearsed, but they, it is a tribute to her acting, this level of kind of raw spontane spontaneity that you yeah. never quite know what you're going to get from her. Last year, she actually won a Tony Award last year for uh, A Doll's House Part Two, which was this terrific sort of extension riff on Ibsen's A Doll House, sort of what happens after Nora mm. leaves and she comes back. <laughs> and it's a very, very funny play. And she was really spectacular. So I think she's going to be something to see in, in this production as well. So cool. Yeah. And then the third, we, we talked about this production um, the last time we spoke. And this is a really, you know, everyone loves this guy. Uh, Nathan Lane yeah. in Angels in America. Let's talk about yeah. this because everyone knows him as this comedian. He's so funny. And, you know, Angels in America being such a um, serious subject matter in some ways. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, I think, you know, when I was thinking about who I wanted to touch upon in terms of performers, and we, we, we quickly talked about Angels in America last time, but, yeah. you know, I started giving it some more thought. And Nathan Lane, I mean, it's miraculous. The guy has done this, I think it's going to be his 22nd Broadway show. God, that's insane. That's a lot of Broadway shows. Yeah, that's a lot of Broadway shows. <laughs> yeah. How does and that to your point, time? <laughs> um, many of them have been musicals and, and comedies. And right. I've always said that the the, the mark of a, of a truly good actor or actress is somebody who can play comedy because they understand timing and they understand relationship and they understand the context of the, of the world of a, of a play. So I think oftentimes comedic actors don't get the credit where credit is due. And the same thing goes for the Oscars and, and comedy films. You know, oftentimes those performances and those films don't get the acknowledgement that kind of a, a heavyweight film might get. Uh, so, you know, Nathan has won Tony Awards for uh, the producers and a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. But he did this role at the National Theatre in London and got raves for it. And he's uh, playing the role again when he comes back. Uh, to here, to New York City. And Roy Cohn was this visceral, really son of a bitch, if I can use that word. I mean, he's a really challenging attorney. You know, during the McCarthy era, he was part of the Lavender Scare, a group of politicians and influencers who were going after the LGBT community. And Roy eventually died of AIDS. And to his deathbed, he said he had liver cancer. He never admitted wow. to his relationship with men. So there's so many complexities going on there, both in terms of the man and the context of where it fits into our culture and our, and our society historically. And I think he's going to be great. I, yeah. you know, I saw Nathan in uh, It's Only a Play a few years on Broadway, which was a revival of this uh, Terrence McNally play, which was OK. But it, it was that performance where someone really kind of transcended the material. And I just thought, this this guy is really something magical. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to to buckle in for that show. Yeah. If people are interested in coming to New York to see it, you should know that you can only, it's two parts. It really is, it's epic. And it's each part is so many movie. hours of theater. Yeah, it's a lot of hours. Yes. So, you know, get some coffee. Pack a snack. And, and pack a snack yeah. and, and come to New York to see it. So you need to buy tickets for both parts, Millennium Approaches and Perestroika. And you'll be committing to probably seven hours Amazing. of theater. Brilliant theater. Yes. But seven hours, nevertheless. So there's also some really cool things happening off-Broadway, some smaller productions that are really fun and unique. Um, let's talk about a couple of them. Yeah. Um, this one called Miles for Mary um, sounds really funny. I don't know. Tell me a little bit about this one. 
Yeah, so I saw two shows in the past week that are running through the spring. Miles for Mary started with a company called The Mad Ones, which mm -hmm. is uh, located in Brooklyn. And, uh, and they have sort of this collaborative performance uh, development, style, like production style, where I, I, my guess would be that they they sort of improvise around certain themes and then end up with a script. I actually did get to see the script because I reviewed it for the Broadway blog. And even though you feel like you're watching something improvisational, every little minor detail is written down. It's no so kidding. meticulous. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and in short, it basically takes place in this high school teacher's lounge in Ohio in the 1980s, and it's a group of teachers and guidance counselors who are pulling together a, a marathon to raise money for Mary. Mary was probably a student who passed away and by some demise, and it's sort of to honor her. Um, but for anyone that's ever sat in any kind of meeting in an office or a school or whatever the case may be, and you have to deal with personalities, this sort of explodes that idea in a really funny and also a very touching and, and kind of heartfelt way. Really, really good. Yeah, Laugh it sounds out really loud cool. good. People who are fans of Christopher Guest, movies like Waiting for Guffman, yeah. films like that, I think would really, um, really get their jam on with this show. Yeah. And it was just extended. So if you're coming to the city this month, it's running through February 25th. Yeah. Cool. So still a little time to catch that one. Yes. Um, all right, what else do we have here? In the Body of the World, what is this one? Yeah, well, In the Body of the World just opened last night at Manhattan Theater Club. It started actually at uh, American Repertory Theater. It was directed by Dan Diana Paulus, and it is uh, written and starring Eve Ensler. So Eve Ensler one of her many claims to fame, because she's an incredible actress and activist, is the vagina monologues. Nice. So she's very much been focused much of her uh, professional life on sort of empowering women and issues surrounding that. This particular play uh, uses the framework of her cancer diagnosis that she had uh, probably five or six years ago. She's diagnosed with stage three cancer and went through extensive treatment for that. But it really is about her relationship with her body, her relationship mm -hmm. with the world. She's done a lot of work in the Congo for uh, women who have been um, raped and lots of other uh, societal issues happening in Africa. Also her relationship with her mother and her relationship with her sister. And it's these series of, I mean, the whole thing is a long monologue. At one point, I'm gonna sound like my father, but I was like, how does she remember all these lines? lines. <laughs> like, it really is yeah. an epic journey wow. and so uh, so natural and so funny. And her, her, her observations are so keen and some kind of way, like flipped in an unusual way. So I think, uh, you know, for, for anyone who's interested in that kind of performance, it's an absolute must see. It, it really, wow. It really blew me away. It runs through March 25th. And I should also say, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce her name correctly, Myung Hee Cho is the set designer. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to give it away. I mean, you think you're going to see a one person off Broadway show and it's going to be like a chair. Right. Um, and there is a chair. <laughs> There's also a love seat. But there is this spectacular transformation that happens on stage at the end of the show where the audience actually is kind of invited to become part of it. I know wow. that sounds so cryptic. Uh, but if you can come to New York and, and see it, you'll understand what I mean. Or my review will be live tonight on the Broadway blog, and you can read that. I'm not going to give it away, though. Perfect. Yeah, no spoilers. No, I love yeah. this. I love getting recommendations for things like this because usually one-person shows are just this kind of enigma to me. I always wonder, what is that experience really going to be like? There's a lot of sort of... Um, cliche things that people do in one person shows uh, mm -hmm. but it sounds like this is really unique and really powerful and and i definitely appreciate the recommendation on this one yeah i think there's a parallel too between angels in america which won the pulitzer prize and eve's show uh and i think what's appealing about both of them although they're very different angels is is going to be this theatrical spectacle and, and Eve's show, you know, except for the final moments, is really just one woman talking, yeah. is that it looks at a subject matter in a really intimate way and also sort of blows it out so you can see it in a, in a perspective 
that is much bigger than the individual. And I think that's the mark of some really great theater and great writing. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't have too much time, but I definitely want to touch upon this. This is this is why I love talking to you, Matthew, because you tell me about things that have not been on my radar. But the Tina Turner musical, I yes. didn't know this was happening. Uh, it's I know. Not, first of all, who exactly. doesn't love Tina Turner? She's the most amazing woman. Um, you have to love her. <laughs> what, what, what do you know about this? Well, not too much besides that it's opening on the West End this spring. Uh, preview start March 21st, and it is a biopic about her life. So there, you know, there are a lot of shows that are happening these these days that use the music of a yeah. particular performer, maybe not in the context of their lives. But the Tina Turner musical is about Tina. They did this, you know, nationwide search or worldwide search to find someone to play Tina Turner. I'm sure she's oh going to be amazing. So <laughs> Big I, shoes to fill, though. I mean... Huge shoes. It's, it's, well, you know, Jesse... I mean, it, it's a much different kind of performance. I was just thinking of Jesse, who won a Tony Award for Carol King. True, yeah. Uh, very, very different than Tina Turner, but challenging nonetheless. And yeah. still and sort then, of like to, to, to have to play uh, a performer who is still alive, <laughs> you know? Um, right beautiful um i'm thinking of on your feet as well and mm -hmm. now the tina Turner. It's, it's sort of a lot of pressure it is it is and speaking of musicians that are this isn't even on our list but as we wrap up sure i was at an event last week and there's a new gogo -Go, go go's musical coming mm -hmm. to new york i want to say it's starting on the west coast maybe at la jolla and then it's supposed to transfer to new york uh sometime this summer directed by michael mayer uh, and that uses the music of the Go-Go's, who I am a huge fan of, but it is not the Go-Go's life. So it's this entirely oh, fantasy-driven, you know, uh, he described it, because I went to this preview event, where the Go-Go's were playing live. And, by the way, they sound absolutely incredible. I love they that. They sound so good. I was like, when are the Go-Go's going to go back on tour? <laughs> they should. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, we'll have to learn more about that as that I develops. Know. That's a teaser. I need yeah, to, a it's teaser. like a dangling theatrical carrot for you. Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, Matthew, thank you so much once again from the Broadway blog. If you want to get more info on the shows that he has reviewed there, we'll also have some info on golocalprov.com. Matthew, thank you so much. It was so wonderful talking to you again. As always, you too. That is my show for today. Be sure to tune in to Kate Nagel at the 4 p.m. hour with news and politics. And I'll be back next Tuesday. Thanks so much. See you soon.